So when it comes to planting, uh, we use these small hessian bags. Um, before you start putting any seeds in bags, you can weigh the seeds and that will give you a pretty good idea of how many seeds that you have. Uh, and the way that we do it is we put inert sand, uh, so you can buy this, it's just uh, play, play pit sand. Uh, we want it to be sterile to make sure that we're not importing any nasties from anywhere else. Um, and you half fill these bags with inert sand and this will act as a growth medium for the seeds and also help to weigh the bags down to keep them on the seabed. Uh, and then we place 50 seeds into each bag. And we found the quickest way to do this uh, is to use a, a scoop, uh, just, a, just a, a cooking measuring spoon. Uh, this, it's what we found that one sixteenth of a teaspoon is around about 50 seeds. Um, so you put your inert sand in, put a scoop of seeds in, and then just tie the tops of the bags. Uh, once you're, you've bagged all your seeds up, uh, they, need to be, they need to go out and be planted uh, probably within 24 hours uh, because you really don't want the seeds drying out at all. Um, and you want to be dropping a bag in at roughly one per square metre. Uh, the idea is that one bag will, the seeds of one bag will germinate uh, and they will eventually over a sort of five to ten year period spread out to fill that meter, that meter squared. We're also doing some trials at the moment with clump planting because there's some evidence to suggest that uh, groups of bags together might actually be form a more re resilient patch of seagrass which will be more effective uh, for restoration. Um, but with the trials are sort of ongoing with this. At the moment, uh, the rules are that you have to have a license to plant from, from a vessel. So, but we're just uh, ironing out details with Marine Scotland at the moment about this, so hopefully it might make things easier. Uh, when it comes to pre-designating your planting area, uh, you really want to have four GPS points ideally uh, to, to mark out where the corners of the block that you're going to be planting are. Uh, so you can have one person with a GPS making sure that you're staying within the planting area. In terms of predetermining where, the, where good areas are for planting, this, this can be a little complicated, but really you're looking for at the depth range. So it needs to be within the tolerances of seagrass. Obviously it needs light to grow, so you need to consider that. Uh, you also need to want to be looking at the substrate, so uh, what kind of uh, bottom you have. The loch here is, is pretty muddy everywhere, but the seagrass seems to survive in it. Uh, but this will be this will vary from area to area, uh, and uh, are crucially uh, existing seagrass patches. So if there's a sparse seagrass bed there already, you know that it, it can exist there. So that's obviously a, a good indicator. Um, you need to consider a bit of what's the activities that are happening within the area. If there's any reasons that the seagrass has declined massively there for, for example, runoff from the land, any sort of pollution that's coming in or from other uh, activities in the sea. So if there's obviously a, an issue there, then you don't want to spend a lot of time and effort uh, planting in areas where it's just not going to survive. But as I said, this could be slightly complex and this is an area that, that, that sea wilding will be able to help you with. Um, sort of determining the potential areas for restoration. <laughs>